At the KSMO studios, we uh, have 833 right now, KSMO. It's a cool morning in Dan County. It's sliding in safely was hospital administrator Casey Lucas. Good morning. Safe. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, here Casey is uh, casual today. Of course, I mean, he has to, he has to go down and uh, there are some vaccinations being given at the Dane County Firehouse today and again next Thursday, by gosh, by golly, don't yeah. forget that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got some news for people about those vaccinations, do you? I do. And I, I, I want to say we've got, uh, we've got plenty of vaccines. Uh, if you qualify for uh, Phase 1B, Tier 2, which is uh, those 18 to 64, or 18 to 64 that are at high risk, mm-hmm. uh, considered high risk, and then uh, those over 65 uh, qualify. If you're mm-hmm. in that group, please uh, come by the firehouse. You and, and you haven't been vaccinated, please come by the firehouse. Call or call the uh, uh, the health center, the Dent County Health Center. They can schedule you today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also get scheduled for next week, um, and then. Uh, Again, you but you can from eleven to three today. You oh, can you come in. One. Oh, I'm one. sorry. One, one to th- thank you because I would I would have got uh, <laughs> you got you, you yeah. got yelled at. I would have got it. So one to three. <laughs> one to three. Uh, <laughs> you can come in and no no uh, uh, appointment necessary. Just come on in and and get your vaccine. As long vaccine. as you still have vaccine yep. available. Yes. So if you get a, a rush, yes. then yes. you know now you have approximately forty doses left that Actually, have not been accounted for. We got a we we have eighty scheduled today. Oh, just eighty. Just eighty. Oh wow. And we have two twenty. Oh, to you get. have one hundred and forty. Yeah. Whoa, wow. Yes. Yes. I thought you said one eighty. Well, and I'm going to say uh, uh, that eighty may have changed. Yeah, I, that was yesterday evening when we talked about that. But you have a lot of doses so, available. Yes, we do have. Okay. Yeah. Doses so it's available. worth somebody's gamble to get on down there. If you need to be vaccinated and you fall within that phase 1A. So if you're still a health care worker or anything of that nature, you can get it too. Or sure. Residential yes. care worker yes. or, or pe- uh, those people. Uh, emergency responders, you can always get that. That's phase 1A. And then, of yeah. course, Phase 1B then includes uh, others like the over 65 and those who are in, immunocompromised. Yes. I saw that word for the first time, immuno. I don't really know what that means, uh, but immunocompromised. I thought, okay, here we go. We're going to start some new vocabulary. <laughs> but uh, if you are that, uh, and basically that can be a lot of different things. So if, you are, if you're not con- too concerned uh, with getting covid I can't tell you, I wouldn't still get the vaccine because if you're immunocompromised, uh, it could really hit you hard. That's uh, that's something you don't want to have happen. So if you've got issues, uh, get in touch with your doctor if you're not sure uh, or call the doctor's office or call their office and then find out and say, would I qualify for that? And and if you do that, then uh, they say, yeah, get your butt over there, then go, go do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Probably a good idea. But anyway, so today from one to three... Stop on by Den County Fire Station right there, number two South Main Street. And uh, if you qualify in in any of the, the Phase 1A or Phase 1B, Tiers 1 and 2, you are eligible to get your, your vaccination, and you don't even have to make an appointment. Just come on by. If you do want to schedule your appointment for next Thursday, though, you do need to do that. You just can't, as of right now, you just can't show up for that one. That is correct. Yeah, so yeah. 729-3106, the number to call, and get that done. All right. Yes. <clears throat> and while we're talking about the vaccine, I guess we could talk about uh, last week's, a little bit about last week's uh, mass vaccination. It was, so it was cold. It was cold. <laughs> it was, was very really cold. cold. It was very cold. But it went over pretty well. It uh, went well. Very, very well. Uh, gave 1,800 of 2,000 shots that we had. So uh, went well. Even the day before that, we had our firehouse and, and gave... Mm-hmm. Uh, 180 of 200, so about the same. Uh, again, left with 220, and that's where we are today. And so we will uh, make those available. Again, that, uh, you know, I do want to say um, all that were involved, you know, from the facility itself, um, definitely want to thank uh, 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 
Denton County Health Center. Yeah, staff, Benny Maxwell, and yeah, yeah the, the whole and the commons, the, the whole commons. Yeah. You know, uh, clearing, getting the the the. I know there was a lot of people involved getting the 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 parking lot cleared. Right. Um, really, that facility. I mean, it, it it really helped to have that facility and have the road, and it was perfect, perfect for that. You, yeah, good you loop. had log lines that we would normally have. Mm-hmm. Uh, was perfect for that, and uh, you know when we again it was it was a good again all that participated in it as well uh not only smdh staff that i'm very proud of uh but also the the dead county health center uh as well as uh national guard, yeah, the right. national guard. Yeah. they they did a phenomenal job i mean to have them come in and set up oh that was i mean that was half of yeah. the half the battle right it there is. just setting up yeah, for this thing is. and uh all the supplies they they brought with them it was it was a great uh, uh, a great event. So bit of a challenge staying warm, but that uh... yeah. And you know we had enough. You know, you you learn even in two day, a two day period. You learn how to make things better. I mean, oh, it's yeah. improvement hour by hour. Yeah. We're improving the how sure, we're sure. how we're bringing people in and and you know I, I, the the National Guard brought a lot of those suggestions too, but. As we were doing it, we we saw well. If every station we had two people giving the vaccination mm-hmm. instead of just one, man, we could really push those people through. So, uh, and I will say again, all those involved were very, um, very uh, willing uh, and and really wanted to be out there and doing and and be out most of the day. I mean, they wanted to push people through. They wanted mm-hmm. to give. A great service to these people and i think uh you know, some of the reactions that we had from uh, those receiving the vaccination i mean you know it was just it was touching the so. facts you know and reminding everybody that even with the 1800 that went through they got to come back they got to get a second dose yet so yes. this is all going to be repeated yes. next on the 11th and 12th and they're going to do it again so yes. um so if you have any questions about the vaccinations, please contact Denton County Health Center, 729-3106. Again, I want to remind you, we'll do it again here before we, we get done, and we'll remind people throughout the day this morning, if you do qualify to get vaccinated and you haven't had a chance, maybe the snow has prohibited you from getting out, maybe even last week's cold prohibited you from getting out. You know, some people can't handle that cold, Casey. They just yeah. literally can't get out. I know it's still cold today, but nothing like what it was last Thursday and Friday. Nowhere near. Yes. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, if you can get out, if you can get to the fire station uh, here locally between one and three today, you don't even need to make an appointment. You can just show up, but you have to qualify yes. for the tier one and two of phase one A and phase one B. You can go online and check with that, uh, check out what that is, or just call the health center and find out if you do qualify and tell them what uh, your age is or what your occupation is or what you do, and, and they'll let you know. Yes. All right. Very good. Get that vaccine, and then yeah. you'll come back again. It's basically 30 days, isn't it? It's like a yeah, 30, it's a 28-day. 28 28-day. 28 day. We're, we're, we're doing a, just a four-week schedule. So if you come today, it'll be four weeks from today, and you're, you're, you're coming come back. Come back and get yep. your second dose. Yep. Okay. And if you don't get your second dose, you're, not, you're protected, but you're not fully protected. Right. Yeah. Yep. You want to get that second. That's the booster is what they call it. Yes. The booster. Yes. Like a booster. Yeah. We can make yeah. something out of that, couldn't we? Come get your booster. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, very good. So uh, we want to thank Casey for coming by today. We know that the vaccinations are neat, and they like to get response and see how people are doing. And very good. And uh, there's some changes being done at the hospital because of COVID-19. A few things have changed because it's gotten better. Well, we're going to talk about those in a little bit. We're not going to jump out of order. I know that <laughs> messed you up last time, but we won't do it. All right, well, first off, I uh, want to thank um, the entire staff at, at SMDH and everything for trying trying to keep these meetings going. This is not easy. The Zoom meetings are not exactly the best meetings in the world to go to, you know. Um, sometimes you're challenged a little bit audio-wise, some, for the most part, but you have to try and get board members to respond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you well, have to I mean, know that they're there. And, yes. You know. But I, I think everybody's done the best they could with the situation is. But I am going to step out and say the March meeting, as of right now, will be attended in person. Yes. 
as of right now. Yes, as of right now. Um, and and we can't wait. They can't wait to get back in person. I can't wait to get back in person. Yeah. Um, if anybody, if anybody out there has has went to or participated in a Zoom meeting, um, the the participation, it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. When you're in person, there's just more participation and there's more uh, everything. So I mean, it, yeah. it just. Um, well, you can read get, people's. Yeah. You can see yeah, when people I see, are confused. I can see if, if somebody's got a question, and, yeah. and you can you can address those things. And you know, today that that doesn't necessarily. I mean, you can't. You know, you can't always see that. Uh, you know, yes, we have a picture of everybody, right? Um, and usually we're focusing on the presentation exactly. itself. So it, it just the, the the way things are set up. Again, it, it you wish you could. Uh, you could get back and and like like you said mm. march meeting we're we're hopefully going to get back and we'll just continue to watch the the uh the activity the for for dent county and for our our mm, service yeah. area hard to believe it's been a year yes it is a year that we've been doing this however uh, and i and i i wasn't able to ask this question because they mute them with media i don't know why you know she always media microphone should always be on <laughs> but I'm assuming that if somebody still doesn't feel very comfortable, they could still zoom in at the next meeting. You will yes. still have that option oh, yes. available. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if yeah. somebody really wanted to do it, you can still I, do it. You know, I think this has changed a lot for a lot of different uh, organizations, um, just industries in, in, in general, just the, 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 having the availability of this. It's just it's too it's too beneficial mm -hmm. to say well you know and and yes like we said it's it's better if you can get um, everybody in person but when that person if you don't have a quorum yet you could have a quorum right if you have a Zoom if you have that that outlet to right. Zoom and this uh, yeah you could have the meeting and, and as you're saying this type of um, meeting which was this is in the bylaws now this was all changed years ago but it, so uh, that a quorum could be made just in case you had the situation because what if somebody had the flu and they don't want to come in they're sick but they yeah. could attend the meeting by zoom and you would have enough to constitute a quorum yes yes you know otherwise you got to reschedule the meeting and hopefully you can get everybody there and that makes things sure. a little bit more difficult so uh it has changed things i know city has done this uh county has really had to, they haven't really done anything with the Zoom as far as that is concerned, but I'm sure if things would have gotten any worse that that could have been done as well. So, very good. But anyway, so that's the good news. The yes. bad news is, is that we still aren't making any money. No. You know, now, we, no. May, we may be able to recover some of these losses. However, now we have to wait on the PPP, yes. the loan forgiveness. And maybe some money coming back in from a 340B drug program sure, and yes. some other things. So, yep. so some of this could be recouped. But Casey, I, I want people to get alarmed when they hear these kind of numbers. You know, the, yes. uh, the losses. The hospital has money available. Yes. That they can turn to. Yes. But when you hear about a nine hundred thousand dollar loss for the month, that's pretty steep. It is. It is. It is, and it, it's it's it is, um, and and I'll say this: there's there's not one month that when you start looking at at those type of of losses that uh, you know really operations to to change operations enough. And, and I'm saying operating expenses mm -hmm. to change operating expenses enough to make that difference. There's not enough we can do in a in a, any particular month to save nine hundred and nine thousand dollars. I mean, it's just it is a fact. It is a a product of um, uh, higher expenses for some things. Yeah. Okay, because of COVID. Right. And then we have, and, and some are not COVID related, so we just do have some fluctuation in sure. expenses. Um, and, uh, but, but I do think that um, you have that fluctuation, added expense for COVID, volume 
at its lowest for COVID. And um, yeah, it, it, there are, but like you said, there are dollars there that can help us through. And we just, you know, we're, we're going to have to take advantage of that. So one of the questions that since we were muted, I could not ask. Mm-hmm. But one of the questions that was coming to me now, we've been through this a year. Yes. That's what I, you know, I want now the operating statement. Obviously, this is for January. We're talking about in February. So actually, one year would have been in March. So we'd actually have been kind of still not really affected. But the last true full month we had no COVID was last February. Yes. You know, so that there was no effect of the COVID because middle of March is when they start shutting everything yes. down. Yes. All right. So when we, we look at that, and I was, now my question would have been, all right, so it took us a year to get to this stage. But how long do we anticipate it's going to take us to get out of this stage? Because you know as well as I do, even after we get maybe even back to a semblance of normal, people are still going to probably be hesitant yes. about yeah. Still going to the yeah. hospital or maybe even making doctor's appointments or getting outpatient um, care. Now, you know, I know that the hospital is going to have their health fair, which was not brought up at the meeting. Is another thing. That's why they should never meet the media. <laughs> <laughs> um, going to be March 1st through the 15th. Again, you're going to be making that appointment at the hospital. But these yes. services that the hospital would do at a different location so that it doesn't really get in the way of the normal operations of the hospital. Sure, sure. Um, we're now going to have to be held at the hospital simply because we're not over this thing yet. Yes. So, but as we progress through and the vaccinations get out and we see uh, virtually the cases dropping exponentially down, which is sure. great, which sure. is fantastic. Sure. Yep. How... <clears throat> How long will it take people to get back to that norm if they feel comfortable if they have to go to the hospital or if they have to go to see their doctor? I think, you know, right now, and, and I'm, it's just an observation, you know, you're starting to see people maybe gain a little bit more confidence because of the vaccine. But like you were mentioning earlier, Johnson & Johnson's going to be, their vaccine is going to be up for approval next Friday. You know, yes. They're going to be yes. hearing it. Yes. So if that would get in, and maybe mass vaccinations will be for everybody. Well, I don't know. I mean, they they. I said, and, I said maybe. And, and <laughs> yes, I, you know, you exactly. It's maybe because the 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 availability of those. You know, I've read just a few things that say there will not be that they won't have the the inventory. Well, that, not yet. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, it it will. It, it, I don't know. Early on, we were we were hearing spring. We were hearing uh, summer before those vaccinations got to everyone. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, you, we're still saying the vaccinations now. The the rates coming down. I, I still think even locally, our rates are lower than nationally where rates are and mm-hmm. so you know for us that's a great thing for dent county and right. for our surrounding area that, that it we have seen such a uh a decline in right. in that um but i think uh people are still going to be leery and i think it's going to be a while before we get back to that uh, and and this weather like this yeah. i mean you know you're this not going anywhere. Compounded, <laughs> not only COVID, but compounded this week from this weather. Sure. I mean, sure. you know, we had 10 ER visits yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's normally 25 to 28 ER visits, and we right. had 10. So, I mean, that volume, that, um, and, and I know people are putting off. Getting things done. Getting absolutely. things done. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a, but <clears throat> but again, next week we should be back to a COVID normal, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. And then, uh, you know, 18 to 20 a day. And then, uh, uh, but, and, and that's when you talk about that. Um, we've, we've noticed because the testing for COVID has come down. Right. It's kind of starting to. Wind to, down. Yeah. That, uh, that our registrations, outpatient registrations, are then now falling as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, you see those. We see all, you know, as we start to, as we right. will start to look at the, the statistical summary of, of everything that we do, inpatients, you know, 
um, average last year 120, and that was with COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not year to date. That's an average for admissions, 120. Uh, we are average this year of 94. Um, so you start to look at those numbers, and well, just look at January I, 20 and look at January 21. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's almost a 60. Yeah, in uh, inpatient admission turnaround, sixty. Yeah. When you only had ninety four this January, sixty. That's two thirds of that number of ninety four. You could have multiplied that out. Yeah. So that's a lot. That, that that's is. a lot. That's it a is. lot of different things it, going on there. And we're starting the budgeting process. Oh, I mean, I know. it is it's, it is a just, terrible uh, thing. To I, start I don't at. envy the people in the finance committee trying to figure this out, because well, we've had that you know a few years back. We had that one year that just things just extrapolated out of sight. Yes, you know it was a deviation from the norm, true norm. I mean, you didn't yes. expect a little rise, but yes. you don't expect a jump. You yes. know, yeah, you don't expect a GameStop jump. <laughs> you know, shoot right up there, <laughs> you know, like that did that one year. However, the the issue is is that you, this is all unknown territory, and you don't even know what to expect going forward. And that's why my question would have been, where do we see, or has there been discussion with MHA or any of those people about, all right, if we can get these things into place, vaccinations, et cetera, that hopefully by end of 2021, we might be in a semblance of back to near normal. Calendar 2021. I mean, again, we're right, we're talking, calendar. yeah. Not fiscal year twenty twenty one. That won't happen. Yeah, no, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, calendar things may be back. You know, if we say, well, once everybody's vaccinated, and then there's a six month build or a you know ramp up period mm-hmm. to, for hopefully things to get back to the norm, um, and I think it's all dependent on the rates and where the rates go today, sure. and it, it we just have to. Right, and we know there's not to say there's not going to be COVID still around. It sure. will still be around. Sure, you know they still have. We still have measles. We still have mumps. We still have chicken pox. You know, and so, and yeah. and to say that the decline, I mean, you can't say the decline that we've seen over the last thirty days or you know twenty one days or whatever you want to that decline that we've seen. You can't say that's because of vaccinations say it's not. because of doggone cold weather well people it, aren't going anywhere right <laughs> or it's or it's just the results of our finally our results of social distancing and and mask wearing and 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 hand, mm-hmm. hygiene and all of those things that have, it's it's now maybe taking effect or we're seeing results of that you can't, I mean, I don't know. You can't really say, but I don't think it's vaccinations. Well, and, I think a lot of it has to do with some of it has to do with vaccinations because in the larger cities where they have received more vaccinations, obviously we have in Dan County, you're seeing this massive drop. And and I'm, now, I, I don't want to go take a COVID test if I don't have to, but if I got sick, I think if you try to go to a hospital or anything, they're going to give you one. Sure. Oh yeah, that's so, no that's, matter what. that's normal at, at yeah, this point. Yeah. That's so I mean, so normal protocol. It, so the chances of you, if you're already sick, going in and having COVID, might be a lot better than if you just went and got a test and you're feeling fine. Uh, you know that negativity, as far as po- you know, the positivity rate would be a lot lower if you had a whole bunch of people go and test negative. But the chances of that happening now, as soon as somebody gets a little bit ill right now, you get tested for COVID. Well, you got a better chance. If you're getting tested, only the people getting ill are getting tested. You got a better chance of, of a higher number. Well, and and is it a, is it part of the seasonal COVID? You know, there there, I've I've heard we, many we many know. things, yeah, but you know, know. You, you you you're, yeah, I, I don't know, vaccines, seasonal, uh, you know, ups and downs mm-hmm. of it. And then the, the new strains as yeah. they come through, and that's going to change things too. Sure. So, let's get off COVID okay. for a while. Let's talk about some numbers. And we did nine hundred nine thousand dollar loss, uh, and we already talked about the, the inpatient admissions way down. Uh, not something we want to see, but that is just the, the cold hard facts about it. Inpatient census days, though, the people who did have to go to hospital case, they were pretty sick. 
Yes. You know, so the inpatient census days didn't suffer terribly with that no. kind of reduction because we had 152 back in January 20. You had 371 days. You had 94, 326 days. That tells you some people are sick. Yes. Yeah. So uh, your, your acute care patients per day, 10.5. And uh, the average length of stay was 2.98, basically three days. For that yes. Length of stay. Yes. And then the registrations, as you mentioned, when you see some things start to reduce, you see other things start to reduce. And when they start to reduce, so do those tests. So do those procedures. However, I will say the rehabs have stayed fairly good. And I know rehabs were down a little bit in January because yeah. of the weather. There were some yes. times they literally could not get there. But home health visits were actually in pretty good shape. Yes. Yeah. No, it, it there. Again, it just it's it depends on the area. It depends on what they do, but we have we have been very fortunate mm -hmm. to to keep our our uh, rehab uh, treatments going. Um, and like you said, yes, maybe for the month they were they were down for January, but and and we will see, uh, you know, a little bit gone from February because of this week. Sure, so yeah. we'll see a dip there as well. Um, but there, there is some areas that, again, uh, surgeries, I mean, those have stayed consistent. Since you started and, yeah, doing them since again. We, yep. Since we got back. Yep. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, we'll see some of those areas. And, again, I hope that the confidence in, in, in the lower cases of COVID, people getting out, uh, will bring that volume around. Very so. good. Yep. That's what we want to see. We want that volume to climb back up. So as we take a look here, the emergency room visits, as you mentioned, COVID normal, not even really there. No. Uh, we usually have over 600, but yes. uh, about 532. But again, we had a cold spell and snow and a little bit of ice, more, mostly ice. Yes. So you couldn't get around anyway. Uh, pretty amazing to me, though, when we see the emergency department, when we have, you know, the ambulance runs at 100, 190 and 139 patients were transported. We're still sending, that actually is less than normal. I mean, I'm more than normal transported, 51 drive runs. That's a little bit less than normal. We've been at about 34 yeah. or 35%. Yes. Yes. That's almost closer to 27%, yes. which is good. Yes. Saves money because they have to go out there anyway, whether yeah. somebody uses them or not. But the one thing I liked about here is that, is that nobody expired in our emergency department. Yes. Uh, and fewer people based upon a number of people that have come through, are going, leaving against medical advice. Yes. Percentage-wise. Yes, percentage-wise. Yeah. Same number as we had back in January 20, but back then we had 745 EDs. Yes. Yep. Versus 532. So, you know, percentage-wise, it's not, you know, you don't want, you really want that to go up like that, but people will because... Well, I, I can't yeah. afford to stay yeah. in the hospital. I can't yeah. do that. You know, just can't do it. So they'll leave. Not always a good idea. No. Not always a good idea. All right, very good. As we mentioned in the operating statement, if when you look at that, obviously the inpatient revenue's down, the outpatient revenue's down, the emergency department revenue's down. Admissions out of that were, you know, basically 69, uh, 66 people of your 91. That's uh, two-thirds. So come right out of the ED. Yep. When you look at that, Casey, and you saw those, you see this total patient revenue down over a million, basically a million dollars from last year. That, yeah. That's where you can see 909,000, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Hurts. It does. It is not. Well, however, it was nice to get tax money in in January. That did help. It did. It did. But again, tax money is only That's used for, for, for those. Fixed expenses, capital expenses, et cetera, et cetera, that the hospital is not used for payroll, not used for operating expenses. I always want to remind people about that. Now, a nice thing that Doug was able to talk a little bit about, though, was he, they have submitted additional information to the SBA for getting that loan forgiveness to yes. the PPP. It's about $2.3 million. Did I hear yes. that right? Yes. Okay. So hopefully hearing something back soon. Yes. Yes. Hopefully that would be. I, I don't know. I think they give you a six-week time period, and it's been three weeks or so since we submitted. So you know, we hope that by next board meeting we've heard and we've sure, got that word back. Yeah. So yeah. 
So it was, this was actually reported at the last board meeting, and then when they sent back needing additional information, yes. that's been resent. So, so very good. Let's hope that that works out. All right. So uh, one of the things that Doug did point out, and there's something that not a lot of businesses in Denton County have, is that effective on minimum wage that happens. You have over $500,000 yes. in income, revenues, then you're affected by the state increase in minimum wage. It was voted on by people was it five years ago. Yes. I still say it's totally illegal. But anyway, who cares? Nobody cares what I say. <laughs> um, but the state minimum wage went up a little bit. Not extraordinarily a lot, but it affects enough people at the hospital that's going to be, what, $55,000 yes. additional for the yes, year? for the year. For the year. $55,000. That's... Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where... It, it it doesn't it doesn't just uh, affect those people that are below the minimum. It affects those Everybody. people that you know all the way up. And and where how do you an increase like that? Um, you know, obviously, uh, it it's got to be feathered in in a way that makes uh, it makes sense to all of sure. those involved. All those employees who are affected and all those employees who are not affected by it. Um, directly, I should say. Yeah. You know, you may have somebody, if, if, if our minimum wage at the hospital is um, $11, you know, uh, you may have somebody that may eleven oh five and have been there for a year, and now that jumps, you know, that, that minimum's jumping to 11 mm. uh, there's got to be some correction, some, um, I would say, uh, market adjustment that has to be made for those individuals. Right. And that's what we do. You basically have to keep them in the same position above the newbies. Or, yes. You know, yeah. if somebody's been there 10 years and there should, surely shouldn't be a minimum wage, but if they're on an hourly basis, that adjustment has to be made in there as well. Yes. Because these other people are all getting raises, and if you stay the same, soon they're going to pass you by so there, there are always exactly those, right. those changes in there. All right. We also, uh, in looking at some of the numbers and the operating expenses, which, uh, again, the supplies with the drug costs, the pharmaceutical uh, costs there again, understand we changed pharmaceutical companies, wholesale pharmaceutical yes. companies. Yeah. So some of our 340B money hasn't been hasn't given been, back to yeah. us yet. Yes. Yes. And that, it's just a process of when that switch happened, um, you know, we we uh, our buying group that we use mm -hmm. switched from using um, a certain company A uh, to company yeah, B, a wholesaler yeah. A to B, and so as we start to make that change to B, there's so many um, depending on timing. And mm -hmm. again, it's it was a very quick turnover that that happened. Um, uh, there's just timing that takes to get all of the paperwork filled out, all of the right accounts filled out, all the right accounts created <laughs> and uh, verified. And it's paperwork. Oh, That's I'll what bet it you is. there's a lot yeah. of it, especially with something that's a government program like that. 340B. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you bet you there's going to be a paperwork. How much paperwork is it? Let's put it this way. Our supplies over last year were $100,000 more. Yeah. With less people there, less of everything. So $100,000 is $100,000. That's a lot of expense well, and, in and, one area. And I know we've got some other expenses with the COVID and sure, gowns and sure, gloves and sure. stuff, but that's still a lot of money. It is. It is a lot of money. And I, the, the, <clears throat> speaking of the 340B, I mean, um, if, if you guys look that up, if you've seen it, if you've heard it in the news, um, you have to be pretty much looking for it. But mm -hmm. uh, what we have experienced is um, the, the conflict between – the the pharmaceutical companies um and and the uh the hersa or oig that 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 will manage the plan for the government um there's been a lot of of, of going back and forth and and um really questioning the program's intent and so uh when when we start looking at how we and our local uh, I guess apply the program at a local level. Mm -hmm. um, some of those pharmaceuticals have basically called out 
the government and said, hey, contract pharmacies, today we have contracts with all the pharmacies in town sure. to supply um, pharmaceuticals at a lower cost mm-hmm. to, um, to the patients, residents of, of our area. So uh, what, we, what we see is those pharmaceuticals saying, I'm not going to do business with those pharmacies, okay, which in turn takes the medications that are being used for 340B, and they're not, a, they're not available under the 340B program to those pharmacies. That makes sense. Uh, and it has to do with them being a contract pharmacy with, understand. with the hospital who is the eligible provider. Okay. So that, that's, that's kind of the, in a nutshell, that's the, their uh, issues going on. And so what we're seeing is at, this, at the local level that uh, those pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals are not available uh, under that 340P program anymore, which, you know, is is terrible for, um, well, for our community. Our so again, yeah. yeah, and and so we are putting some things in place, and they're they're still uh, so new that uh, we're trying to help um, mitigate that issue as much as we can, um, and we will uh, we will have more information coming forward as we as we do that again we've been discussing some of that with the local pharmacies and and trying to um put a plan together to mitigate that so hopefully in the next uh, month or so we've got something in place but everybody changes the rules don't they they do without permission they change those rules all right so anyway with the uh, uh Everything, everything else, as far as most of the expenses, though, and were pretty much in line. That supply one was a little bit high. And there was a question on dues and subscriptions uh, that Doug had to address on uh, why it was so high. Yes, yes, yes. We it had a prepaid expense. On, yeah, on, yeah. And he said I probably should have done that Reclass that, yeah. reclass that to a prepay. Yeah. yeah. When, when we, there are so many things that we pay one time a year, but it's for the whole year. Right. It's for the it's like next twelve months. You pay it and sure. Give it a whole year, right? And so some people pay by month, but for and a lot and of by year time. end, by year end, we will have to reclass that because they will, or when 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 our auditors come in and start looking right. at the, the expenses, they'll say, may hey, go reclass that. Oh, sure. Here yeah. before the next meeting. Well, I mean, so. we we may see a lower expense come out because of that right. reclass. Right. So, all right. So very good. Uh, as far as the balance sheet is concerned. You know, we still have that all that money sitting there waiting that we haven't touched. <laughs> yes, it's still sitting there waiting. We haven't touched it yet. Uh, current liabilities have gone up a little bit, and also your your uh, long term liabilities have gone up because of the bonds for the construction. Yes, so they have gone up, and we've always mentioned about it many many years how the hospital way over the current ratio, way over virtually yes. any ratio when it came to debt equity. You were so low, and then when you have to do something, though, you can. Yes, yeah. You don't have to go try and float bonds and everything. The huge bonds to try yes. and cover it. Yes. Cover the previous bonds as well as your new yes. ones. Yes, yes. Oh, that can really become a nightmare. I don't want to go there. All right, it's very good. So as we go to the cash flow statements, even though we had a $900,000 loss, the cash flow statement only reflected 165,000 loss in cash. Yes. Which isn't bad. No. A couple of reasons there's more been more uh, receivables coming yes. in, which has dropped that number and um, got some tax levy money in and we've got a a, a cost report settlement. Yep. I'm not quite cost. sure what can you explain what that would be? Cost sure. Cost report settlement. Cost report settlement. Mm-hmm. Um, all year long we are paid by Medicare uh, on a last year's cost to charge ratio okay okay so if they say hey your cost to charge ratio is 50 percent then all year long they're paying us 50 percent of our charge okay oh, okay i get it uh, for reimbursement and then at the end of the year they go oh it was 50.6 percent they owe us that 0.6 percent which would be in this case four hundred thousand dollars which is what we received so um that's really that cost settlement and, and every year every year <laughs> yeah it's it's up or down and I, I i say as we look at operations like we see today mm-hmm. okay lower revenue higher expenses mm-hmm. 
I'm very premature in this, you know, this thought, but my thought is they will owe us money at the end of this year as well, right. and probably a larger amount because of the activity that we have seen. All right, because okay. don't think that everything's going to turn around by June 30th. No. To where it's going to change that drastically from no. your current, what's no. currently going no. on. So, no. so by November of next, well, November of this year, we will turn that in, and, and hopefully by January of uh, next year, they will pay us that difference in, in okay. what they owe us. So. so, you know, that's why I say sometimes these numbers, they jump out at you, but they may not be as bad as they really are. You have to wait, you know. I mean, they're not good. Don't get no, me wrong. No, no, no. Right. But, they're bad. But, but they're bad. <laughs> they're bad. But if you're getting $400,000 back because the government owes it to you that for the, that time period yes. or more, um, could, you know, they, if they didn't bring you that money back, that even hurts even worse. Yes. So, so a cost settlement report, very good. All right, day's cash on hand. It's still overinflated because of the additional money we yes. have there. Don't even really pay much attention to that stat at this moment. Yes. And we'll move on with the, the CDs. Don't really pay much attention to that. Though we do have three CDs coming up in March. Yes. I know you're just going to go overwhelming on those. Okay. All right. Yeah. Probably not. Okay. But the aging of accounts receivable uh, down $200,000 from the end of December, uh, which is good news. So, uh, getting more money in. Slowly but surely, the days in net accounts receivable dropping a little bit a day, but a day is a day. And sure. it's getting back uh, from we were at 105, we got down to 98, now 97. So we're starting to make that progress and getting those things turned around. Yes. Part of that money was mine. So I know you did good. Good deal. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, New Year kicked in. My deductible went all the way back to yeah. zero. Uh, okay, Chief Nursing Report. Acute care staffing by a patient acuity. We didn't see a lot of spikes, but we did see a lot of consistency, yes. didn't we? Yes, yes. Very consistent. Um, you know, I, I, volume, we, we in between 12 and 7 patients, which is not a very big you know, there, like you said, there was no spikes that we saw these huge spikes. Mm -hmm. It was very consistent. Anywhere, you know, five patients, seven to twelve, that that difference throughout the whole uh, uh, month. So, um, still um, ten patients per day, which you know, a couple of years ago would have been normal. Mm. So, you know, today it's it's less, a but bit less. Um, but. Um, Definitely, I mean, it could it could have been worse. Could uh, we 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 would really like better, but it could have been worse. So, so if if I was understanding right, and I wanted to clarify this, but again, they mute us. <laughs> I think you have. I don't know. We're gonna have to check that out because I I don't. I no, think, you're, we're, we're okay. They mute us, and I you mean, can't. I've tried. Can't to, I've yourself? tried to click on it during a meeting, and it don't work. Okay. So I don't know why it doesn't work. We'll check that out. Anyway, but one of the way. things that Debbie had reported is is that the hospital is going to open up four additional rooms in acute care. Is that right? They were kind of put aside in case of COVID. Yes. And they had them set out yes. just in case. Yes. That then will now be opened back up yes. for patients. Yes. And then also dialysis, which had had that separation, would be going from 8 to 12 patients. Yes. Yes. We just... Over this, um, well, over the, uh, over COVID, mm -hmm. we, there's a lot of, of uh, guidance that the CDC gives. And again, uh, we definitely uh, take that um, seriously, especially when it comes to uh, long-term care mm -hmm. and uh, dialysis. Those patients are compromised sure, patients. Absolutely. And so we have to be very uh, careful. And uh, again, we've seen this drop. I think this is the time where we can go back out. We feel like um, the positivity rates, the, the amount of uh, uh, active cases are, are so low mm -hmm. that uh, we can go back out, bring, start to replenish those uh, 
I guess those residents we've lost over the last year or so. Right. And so um, we look at dialysis. Again, we can we can see up to 12 patients and, and maybe a couple more just depending on the type of patient and sure. the patient's condition. Sure. But we are down to eight and we are going to get back to our normal of 12. Right. And so we're going to do that. We'll see some of those things over the next mm, few weeks. Hopefully we right. have those vacancies filled and we have people in there. And uh, same thing with long-term care. We had been down to 15, um, back up to 17. Um, we've lost someone over the last week, uh, back down to 16. And we, we plan on getting those last two uh, spots, 17 right. and 18, filled um, very shortly. So, But you have to go through this new process that you didn't have to do sure. years ago. And sure. you were talking about that last time we talked. You yep. know, this whole new process, you you just can't take somebody out of their home and bring them in. Nope. No. Nope. work that way nope. anymore. It, uh, isolation. Yeah. Definitely isolation has to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that is the safest thing for the current residents, for the residents that are coming in. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it looking, again, there's a lot of things up in the air at this point. Um look at vaccinations you look at you mm-hmm. know is uh is a uh, resident more attractive or a, a better applicant for our unit if they've been vaccinated mm-hmm. you know you got to start looking at those things and so mm. uh things that we're looking at and considering so. okay very good all right hospital auxiliary still no meetings until we get to some semblance of order <laughs> yes and then now uh, the hospital foundation uh, had Jason in here on Wednesday, and we talked uh, last Wednesday. Yes, talked about the golf tournament that has been scheduled for fr- Friday, June the fourth. Uh, mark it on your calendar. Still, they still calling everything tentative. However, he is selling sponsorships. Yes, <laughs> yes. So and teams, by the way. Yes. So if you've got a team you want to get into the golf tournament, or you've got uh, you'd like to be a sponsor of a hole, or a sponsor of a booth, or or whatever's going on. And Call if them. and if you had a team in last year and you say hey it's I'm, we're going to have another team, just drop us a, an email. Just uh, give us a quick call at in, in administration. Let mm-hmm. someone know in administration. We'll mark that down and we'll save your spot. Definitely, we want to save those spots of people that have uh, participated in years past, sure. and so we want to make sure we get those in first. Um, but definitely, let us know. Just drop us a line. Mm-hmm. Like I said, let us know. You don't have to have the form in real right now, but you know, just let us just know. Mark it down yeah. so you yeah. already got. We'll them. have an idea. You already got them on yeah. there. All right, very good. So first phase of the sponsorship letters has gone out. If you're a business and you didn't get one, or you know, do things do get lost in the mail? Amazingly, yeah. I got I've got my uh, <laughs> yesterday. I got my anthem bill that was due February first. Got it. Yesterday, I already paid it online, yes. you know. Yes. But yes. I got my bill said it's due February first. Yeah. Okay. You know. Thank you very much. So yeah, things do get lost or delayed in the mail, and of course, uh, with with the uh, sponsorship letters, if you are interested, you can just call Jason at the hospital seven two nine six six two six. Just ask for Jason, and then we will guide you to his. His uh, extension, was it 403? Yes. 400. I'm getting scary. I remember that stuff. Yeah. All right. Wings and Strings, that has been tentatively scheduled for Saturday, September 11th. And, yes, they have confirmed that date with the Dent County College. Yes. So that is a locked-in date. Christiana has been scheduled to perform there. And, of course, it'll be Wings and Strings. You'll hear a lot more about this as we get a little bit closer. But still waiting a little bit on... Some of the stuff to settle down before they make other yeah. other commitments and plans. Things are moving in the right direction. Right, absolutely. And then the title care, USDA distance learning, with the way things have gone with the weather and schools being called off, not much happened with that. Nope. In the month of January, and I'm probably pretty sure and confident not much happened this month either. <laughs> not by anybody's choice. It's just you can't do anything when there's nobody there. Yes. Or can't get there either. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the COVID-19 update. So the hospital, as of the 15th, and I got this like 40 minutes before our board meeting. Jason sent me the update. That was really nice. 40 minutes. It's going to be in a board meeting. <laughs> but anyhow, nonetheless, 
I do appreciate I appreciate that very much. The visitor policy has been revised as yes. of Tuesday. Yes, as of as of Tuesday and uh, really it is we're allowing one visitor with the patient whether it's it's on acute care uh, whether that's um, acute swing bed uh, whatever that is um, in acute care uh, outpatient services so if if you have someone that needs help or mm -hmm. or um, you just want to accompany someone you can do that in outpatient services um, as well as in the ER if we have a patient that that's coming in and, and they need someone with them, we will allow that to happen. So Very really, good. now, that patient has to stay in the room or with the patient, uh, or that, that visitor has to stay with the patient or in the room. Uh, if they leave for any reason, they're done for the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, one for the, the day. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do think... Um, at least being able to get someone in and, and again, there's a lot of healing that happens, oh, yeah. uh, you know, with just having people just available, just uh, seeing people, yeah, just, just, you know, having those people available to you. You only and watch so, so much TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just start. so we hope that, and, and again, that's, that's due to this, you know, downturn in, mm -hmm in COVID cases and, and, and active cases and positivity rate and all of those things, if that stays that good or positive, mm -hmm. I should say, um, then we will continue to do it. Um, and okay. and we, we've kind of tentatively set 10% of the county, for the county positivity rate, as kind of a uh, turning, at this time, when that would turn and probably go back to no visitors. Right. So again, if we would see an uptick in in those cases, we would we would probably shut that down and, right. and go back to this. And again, but we're we're trying to do what we can when we can to make things better. Right. But right now it's about what two percent. Yes. Yeah, I think it's still about two yes. percent. I think the last time I checked. Yes. All right. Now one of the things you mentioned at the meeting uh, with with this new visitor policy, though, if somebody is in isolation, they're still in isolation. Yes. No visitors are allowed. Thank you for reminding me of that. That uh, that needs to be said. If they are in isolation for whatever, doesn't necessarily just have to be COVID isolation, right. but it is isolation, isolation for something. For long term care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to have to stay in isolation. Yes. And now again, long term care is still on a close shutdown. Sure, right. I I mean, but you were, yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about isolation going into long term care. If they had yes. to do that, that's still isolation. Yes. Okay. That so is true. Make it that way. And, of course, masks are still required. So it doesn't mean you get to come in with that person. You don't wear a mask. You do need to have a mask, right? Yes. The visitor needs to yes. have the mask. You'll so. have to go through the – I mean, we're still having the Temperature, screening. Temperature, everything We'll else. still have mm -hmm. all of that. So. Okay. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning of our broadcast, in March, we're looking at the board meetings with the med staff meetings and everything getting back to having people there. So, again, that is also based upon the same positivity yes. rate that Casey talked about at 10%. That is correct. So if it goes above 10 before the meeting, Zoom, baby. Yes. Yeah, no, not really. But, all right. <laughs> Very good, Zoom. All right, so let's get back to a little bit more of, of the numbers. Now, we already talked a little bit about this. It was super successful out of the commons with 1,800 people. Uh, getting their their first dose of the vaccine that's fantastic uh back on february 5th you guys gave out 200 got about 180 in at the last last time we had some bad weather last time so people couldn't really some people canceled sure and they yep. just couldn't make it so on this day now today they're actually doing vaccines again at the at the den county fire station they're not sold out they're not, yes. they're not committed out, guys. Yes. As we mentioned at the beginning of our program, Casey did, between 1 and 3 today, as long as you qualify from Phase 1A, 1B, Tiers 1 and 2, if you qualify, show up. Get vaccinated. You don't have to make the appointment if you qualify. So if you couldn't get to them last, last week, maybe you had scheduled your appointment last week. You, got, you had to cancel. You haven't remade an appointment yet. Show up. Yep, show up, or again, you can always call sure. Dent County Health Center and 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 schedule that. Right, it, it'll be you could schedule it for today. You could, but again, one to three, you can just mm -hmm. walk just in. Just walk in, and and and. But get they schedule next Thursday. Again, 
based on on uh, what our inventory is at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, because again, if we uh, we have 220, we've got 80 scheduled. You know, we we will have plenty, but um, um, I can't say that we won't have a run. So. Yep. So anyway, between one and three today, if well, 80 was the last number you had. That yeah. doesn't mean we still yeah, have. Yeah. So based upon that now, guys, so think about it. If between 1 and 3 and you qualify, head on down to Den County Fire Station this afternoon. You can also call 729-3106 and set up an appointment. Or you can even set up an appointment for next Thursday. There's still some vaccines available for next Thursday. And, again, there are 220 vaccines available for today. Yes. Let's get amused. Let's get yes. amused. Do remember, there is a second vaccine that you have to take, a booster. That comes your way <laughs> later, the booster. Now, there are uh, some dates here, and let's just go over them really quickly because the hospital has to meander things around because we didn't get the Pfizer vaccine. They had to move the Commons Day to the 11th and 12th, so that moved one of the hospital vaccinations day up to the 10th. Yes. Kind of what they had to do the last time when they moved it to yeah. February 10th. And then the uh, last one, uh, March 19th, because there was a, a conflict, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. There was conflict yes. there. Yep. Okay, so if you get your vaccine in February, you have to get another one in March. So check the dates when you're in there. And you do need to wait 28 days or approximately 28 days. Yes. Yep. And when you come in to get your vaccine, when you leave, you will know your date to come back. We give that. We make them very aware this is the day you need to return. All right. Very good. So, good stuff. Yes. Get vaccinated. If, you, if you're uncomfortable, get vaccinated, please. All right, now. A little bit of the uh, renovation, but uh, virtually everything is done now, right? With the expansion and renovation, uh, virtually as far as the construction part. Yeah, construction, all construction there. I mean, we're in the process of uh, testing generators, generators in, mm -hmm. new generators. You're in, tweaking things Yes, now. We're, we're, we're now tweaking. The, the, the last two things is water heater, mm -hmm. okay, and water softeners. Right after we move the old generator because that's what we're gotta so we got to wait for it. to move that old generator we got to test the new one right and that's all going to take place next week right um that uh once we do that we've got to get that water softeners in and water heaters in and then we're done with everything how big a water heater are you guys getting mm. it's got to be a big yeah. tank it's got yeah. you got more than one right yeah it, well we're going to i think yeah. we one to there now yeah, and it's years. and it's old. old. Oh, how bad it is! And, and again, it's 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 lasted fifty years. Yeah, you know? when they die, they die fast. Yeah. Yeah. and there's nothing you can do to. to it, you got to have a new one. Right. Yeah. You know, you, they don't have parts for those. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No. You know, there's not a lot of water, parts of water heaters though. That's, yeah. that's the good news. The bad news is though, is after a while they do fill with calcium. Sure. And they they lose their intensity and. Depending upon the type it is, it, it uh, and people think and they think, well, it feels like good calcium. It does. That takes your water capacity out too. Yes. You lose water. So if it's a 50 gallon tank and you've got four inches of calcium in the bottom of your tank, you just lost four gallons. Yeah. <laughs> does and then it doesn't heat very fast because <laughs> of the calcium. You heat the calcium up. It really loves it. I mean. Takes that water out of the water. So the new generator will be tested next Tuesday and Thursday, the 23rd and 25th. Yes. Once that is done, water heaters, water softeners uh, will all be moved where the old generator is, and that will be taken out. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to sell it? Yeah, I don't think you're Probably not. Sell. Yeah. No. What are you going to do with the old water heater? Are you going to sell it? You're going to have to empty it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nope. No selling it. Just I think getting we'll rid just of those it. things, huh? Yep. Okay, very good. All right, server conversion. Tell us a little bit about uh, these meetings with these kickoff meetings with pay, um, Paylocity and Microsoft Dynamics 365. I mean, does that sound like fun or what, Microsoft Dynamics 365? But yeah. Paylocity, so you've got a new payroll program yes. here. Okay, anybody who's ever done a payroll program, whether it be QuickBooks or Peachtree or anything else knows, mm -hmm. One thing about any payroll program you have is data. Mm -hmm. 
and then more data. Yeah. And then even more data. I don't know how many different salary schedules there are at the hospital, oh, but I mean, God. with hourly employees and everything else, uh, that is going to be a job. Yes. Yes. And, and really we're starting, I, I would say the intense part of our conversion from our current, uh, payroll system, which is in part of evident or CPSI, which is mm-hmm. our, our hospital EHR, sure. um, that that transition, I mean, it technically starts in April, but we're starting now to collect data and starting to have discussions on pay codes, pay types, um, you know, you do, you have you so need. many yeah. different classifications of, of employees, this or that or whatever, uh, depending on shifts that they work and, you know, shift differentials and other things that go into uh, all of those, uh, the, the, the pay for everybody uh, at the hospital that you, you, today we have been very limited because, again, the, the system we have, it's not a payroll system. It's, a, it's an EHR. Right, right. It's an electronic, it's a health it's record just... system that's been, you know, adapted, adapted to yeah. be your payroll, too. Yeah. Be everything in one, and for the longest time it's worked. So I, I will say that it, it has worked. Um, I, I believe that we're going to get away from a lot of the manual calculations that we have to do today. Mm. So... I think, you know, I look for my expectations are very high with this paylocity that we will get more uh, than than what we've ever had before. This will be a lot of detailed data going into these. And as, as what Casey's mentioning, I mean, I can see classifications. And then, as you're mentioning, shift differential and things, all these things being built in automatically calculated as they go out. So there's going to have to be some testing. And obviously, we know trial and error. yes. Comparing this paycheck to the paycheck you currently have, and you know, just trying to do. I always used to do that. I always used to run the same thing, two different systems, just to see did it come up the same, or did yes. it come out a little bit different? Yes. With some rounding of sense, yes. you'd be surprised. And uh, it, it's really it's happening at really a good time because as we start our budget process. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be having meetings with every director looking, talking about budget. And at that time, we, we hope to use that time to also talk to each director individually about special pay codes, what, you know, for payroll, sure. what, 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 what goes into, you know, you may have someone that we consider uh, on a weekend contract that all they work is, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, and mm-hmm. so there are special circumstances with those individuals, and, and so many that you can't even name them all, but but definitely things like that that we need to consider, but uh, we've had some turnover in our accounting department, okay? Right. So we're working with new people to try and, and capture all of this, and, and it's it's not just the responsibility of the accounting department. Right. It's, it's the directors, directors of every sure, department sure. That, that needs to be right. taken into consideration and all of their thoughts and, and, and of processing because right. a lot of the processing is done by those directors. Right. And so um, when they start to think about everything manually they have to do, what could we take away right. from them? What could we make part of this this system so their input is value, super valuable oh, yeah. right now in getting this done and to streamline it as easy as possible beginning obviously the next fiscal year that's when the first paycheck actually will come out yes uh will be in july that will be through the new system all right the microsoft dynamics 365 how's that going to help our hospital okay so that is the gl or the general, general ledger, ledger the accounting um mm-hmm. where everything will from our uh, uh, Cerner system, Mm -hmm. the revenue that's generated, the accounts receivable that's generated, the, uh, all of those things, uh, the, where the inventory is kept, all all within Cerner, okay? Mm -hmm. And those things will all dump at the end of every month into our uh, GL GL. system that will, again, let us then uh, correct things that, that need to be corrected in, in those GLs and really create our financial statements for us. Okay, so very good. So that will automatically just take all those different inputs and then put together a 
you know, obviously a detailed report so as you needed or sure. a collaborative report that will give the overall view of what the hospital is doing. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. So you already had your kickoff meetings with the field groups. You've, you've got, got all this laid out. Now it's just a matter of in four months getting it done. Sure. No well, problem. Well, with the, uh, <laughs> with the uh, velocity, yes, that's the goal. Um, they, and, and what will happen with, uh, I'll just say, the Cerner side of things, mm -hmm. the, the patient care, the, you know, uh, really everything but the GL side and the, and the payroll side, everything that will go into that, um, we actually don't start that process until June Okay, mm -hmm. but there's pre-work that we have to do to, to, before we get to June to sure. make sure, one, that uh, when, when they're ready for us to start looking at things and building to put into our new system in Cerner, that our old system is cleaned up to the point that this is really what we need to focus on. And so I think that's, that's really, to me, that's most of the work and I may be wrong, but I think that's no, most of the work right. is to take and clean up what we've had for 26, 25 years. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell you how long that is. All right, very good. So that's, that's going to be a very time-consuming effort. Yes. By a lot of people. It's not going to be one or two people. It's going to be a lot of people involved in that. All right, very good. So... Uh, by next fiscal year for the hospital, we should pretty well have made that conversion if everything oh, yeah. goes well. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, the go, no live, the go live with it is, is right. mm, You said go live, December. face payment in July. Go live. Yeah, that's Pilosity. Yeah. So that will be. But that's, a, yeah. that's, what, that's when the whole yeah. system will go no, live. No, no, no. The You're whole the, Cerner will go live in December, November, oh. December time. Frame. Okay. Okay. Actually, so, they've said the end of November. I'm saying eh, it'll probably creep into December. Okay, so so just to go live, uh, just, just the, the velocity will go live, and then you're gonna yes. have to still be working. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, very well. Oh yeah, the the, the start dates Come on. again. Start date for prep for velocity is really technically April. Start date for prep for Cerner is in June, and then start date for prep for. Uh, the uh, Microsoft. Microsoft Dynamics 365 is probably August or September. September, yeah. October time frame. Right when they yeah. do an audit. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's sure. a good time to be doing that. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's why it's out that far. Okay. Is because we will be doing all of those things up until, right. you know. And then you can make your changes, whatever you need. Yep. Very good. Yep. And then have the auditors make their comments, too. Yes. Yeah. That is definitely there. what very we're going to. Don't have to pay them twice. All right. Very good. Conflict of interest policy. Uh, this says it falls, has to be within 30 days. And, of course, it always seems to fall with 29 or 28. Sure. sure. So it goes over for another meeting, but that will be reviewed and approved at the next meeting. It really isn't any differences this year is no, no no well no, no. Uh, and we've had uh, we've had a question come up and we're just we're going to confirm everything and we'll present it okay we'll present it next time so. a lot of times it doesn't change very much and if it is it's a tweak no and and no. I, I i hope i said this at the meeting that um i mean technically by law we have to we have to adopt that every two years. Mm -hmm. We do it every year. Mm -hmm. So we're still in compliance because oh, yeah. we did it just a year ago. So uh, we really have until next uh, February. If I'm January not mistaken, that, so. last year we made a small, itty, a small change, and it was just very small. It was just like, uh, I think, a title. Yes. So that was it. But it's still it's a change, yes. and so you approved it, so you're good for two more years, yep. really. Yes. So right, very good. One purchase. We got ourselves yes. a plow. Yes, Woo! we did. We did. Not that you needed it. Yeah. We needed it sooner than we're going to get it, but um, we will have it yeah. from here on out. So, Very good. Yeah. From Midwest Systems Truck Equipment for $3,350. Needed a plow for that. Uh, you got a Kubota, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, for the Kubota. It's a, it's a universal kind of plow. It can be used on anything, but yes. we have a Kubota right yeah. now, and it will work. Yeah. Okay. 
And then uh, you did mention to the board that the inclement policy for the employees was in effect this past Monday. Yes. And you want to explain that to our listeners, if you will? Yes. Um, Real it quickly. Just, it just, uh, if we can proactively put it into place, it saves uh, non-essential or non-patient care people mm -hmm. from getting on the dangerous roads and getting to work. And, and again, it, they they still have to make up the time with PDO or paid paid time off, whatever you want to call that. Um, they still have to make it up. It's 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 considered an excused absence and no problems. It's just it just says hey now uh, because we are a hospital and we have essential patient Services, care people that, that you know uh, you can't just miss and and reschedule something. You we got patients we got to take care of and so for those. I um, mean you're like radio people. No sure. matter what. Sure, no matter what. Just <laughs> like radio people. We have to make it happen. Yeah, certain people have um, to be there. Yeah, you have to be here. And so mm -hmm. um, for those, we just want to make sure that, one, they're thinking about the weather and giving themselves enough time to get here. And if they can't, because you still have those times when you can't, if we can make those arrangements to get them and get them here, mm -hmm. then we will do that. If we can make arrangements to have it covered by someone else, we Got will have time it covered. To do that too. Yes, yeah. and yeah. and for our policy, I mean, our policy says yes, it will be in place if we can proactively put it in place. You know, uh, I knew weather was coming in over the weekend, um, and I knew something. It may hit us Sunday night. Uh, last week we were looking into it and making sure everything was in line, and mm. uh, a call went out Sunday night to say. Hey, it is in effect. Where we are going to put it in effect, and so those people who are non-essential know they don't have to. Well, actually, I think we put it out early, early morning, like five in the five a.m. Yeah, I think we put it out at five a.m. So those people that you know need to get there at eight, they don't have to yeah. get on the road yeah. and get here. Or they're already on the road. <laughs> well, that's true. Sometimes it does happen that's that way. True. But what it does is if people are some people just. They really fear driving in snow and ice, so, or they're in a position where they live in the back forty, and they can't even get out. Yeah, you know, so it does give those uh, those employees an opportunity to not try and have to dig their way all the way to the hospital, and and then as soon as they get there, they're going to be paranoid. They're going to be, they're not going to be worth a darn mm -hmm. when they get there. So, very good. Uh, closed session. Any votes taken? Anything? No, sir. Nothing, sir. Okay, no, very good. Sir. All right, and that's been Hospital Administrator Casey Lucas. Do want to remind everybody, again, we talked about it before. We talked about it in the middle. We're going to talk about it again one more time in case you're just joining us. Uh, the hospital is down at the Den County Fire Station, and they are doing vaccinations today. And you'll be there till 4? Yes. Okay? Yes. Between 1 and 3 today. It's between 1 and 3. If you qualify for Phase 1A and Phase 1B, Tiers 1 and Two, that's a lot of people, health care workers, uh, also your residential care workers. If you're over 65, if you're immuno yes. <laughs> challenged um, and you're 18 to 64, you can go and get your vaccine without an appointment between yes. one and three, three. today. So you, if you want to, you can call a health center and maybe make sure you qualify if you fall in that group. But if you don't, um, you know, still please don't go get the vaccine. If you don't qualify, they're going to, you just don't, yeah. you don't qualify yeah. yet. Now, I do know there's some talk about trying to qualify teachers. Uh, that is not in Missouri. That is not in the phase 1A and 1B, tiers 1 and 2. They're in tier 3, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah. And so uh, there is talk about trying to, escalate them up a little bit or maybe give them a waiver or let them get in so don't know about that yet that's still talked about but yes no well, once we learn a little bit more we'll pass that on to you yeah very good yes all right anything else new no i'm good staying warm yeah. i'm trying <laughs> yeah we're trying a lot warmer today than it was yes tuesday yes <laughs> that's for that's... doggone sure and monday but, uh, yeah, I want to thank Casey for coming in and spending some time with us. Again, if you have any questions about those uh, vaccines, again, you can call the Den County Health Center. If you do want to make an appointment for the 25th, you can by calling the health center. And, again, those vaccinations are at the firehouse, 
number two South Main Street. It's right there at the beginning or end of the S curve, depending upon if you're going from the south to the north or north to the south. But you yes. can't miss them. Yes. The old Becker Motors, Dent County Motors location, and they've done a beautiful job of renovating. So uh, check that out, and you can get that vaccination. So again, today, one to three. If you would like to get vaccinated and you qualify, feel free just to stop on in to the Dent County Fire Station and get that vaccine. Okay, get that vaccination done. Round one, you got the booster <laughs> still to do, but round one, very good. Yeah. Again, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Thank you, sir, for coming in and spending some time with us. Sure. Here on this Thursday morning, we've got Civic Happenings coming up very soon right here at KSMO Radio, your hometown radio station. And uh, Jim will be doing a lot of that good work for you in just a moment, giving you some weather. I'm going to give you the civic record next when we return here in just a moment.